Hello everyone, and today I'm going to start reading a new Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew story. This one is number eight, and it is called Lights, Camera, Cats, and it is written by Carolyn Keene. Chapter one, hooray for Hollywood. I can't believe we're in Hollywood, Nancy Drew said excitedly. I can't wait to see all the movie studios, her best friend George Fain added. I can't wait to see all the movie stars, said Nancy's other best friend, Bess Marvin. I packed my autograph book so I can get zillions of autographs. The three girls were sitting in the back seat of a shiny silver convertible heading down West Sunset Boulevard. Nancy's father, Carson Drew, was in the front seat driving. Next to Mr. Drew was the Drew's housekeeper, Hannah Gruen. Housekeeper didn't quite describe Hannah, though. She had been like a mom to Nancy since Nancy's mother died five years ago. Mr. Drew was in Hollywood on business. He was a lawyer, and one of his clients, Brett Banner, was a movie director. Mr. Drew had decided to combine his work trip with a family vacation and bring Nancy and Hannah along. He had told Nancy that she could invite George and Bess. The five of them had landed at Los Angeles International Airport less than an hour ago. Now they were cruising through Hollywood in a convertible with the top down. What could be more fun? Nancy thought. She loved the way the wind blew through her long, reddish blonde hair. She loved feeling the warm sun on her face. She also loved the scenery. As they drove, they passed pastel color houses with red tile roofs and lush gardens full of tropical flowers. They saw funky boutiques and outdoor cafes packed with people. They rode by tall palm trees and giant billboards. One of the billboards said, Welcome to California. We're almost at our hotel, Mr. Drew called over his shoulder. It's in a part of Los Angeles called Beverly Hills, which is very close to Hollywood. Our hotel room has five swimming pools, Nancy told George and Bess. Five! We can each have our own swimming pool, George joked. Let's check in and then we can take a dip, Hannah suggested. Later this afternoon, we're invited to visit Thunder Chicken Studio, Mr. Drew told everyone. That's the studio where my client, Mr. Banner, is shooting his latest movie. It's called The Aliens Next Door. We'll get a tour and meet the star of the movie. Yay! Nancy exclaimed. Awesome! George agreed. I'm definitely bringing my autograph book, Bess added. Mr. Drew chuckled. <laughs> you might have a hard time getting an autograph from this particular star, Bess. Why, Dad? Nancy asked, puzzled. You'll see, Mr. Drew said mysteriously. Thunder Chicken Studio was a massive complex of buildings on the outskirts of Hollywood. Mr. Drew, Hannah, Nancy, George, and Bess checked in with a security guard at the front gate. The guard gave them all name tags to wear around their necks. Mr. Banner is in soundstage number three, to your left, the security guard told them. They're not in lockup right now, so you can go in. Soundstage? Lockup? What do those words mean? Nancy asked the guard. A soundstage is another name for a building they make movies in, the guard explained. A lockup is when they're about to shoot a scene, so they have to make sure no one enters the soundstage who isn't supposed to. Nancy and the others thanked the guard and proceeded to soundstage number three. As they passed through the heavy metal doors, Nancy felt like jumping up and down. She was about to enter a real live movie studio. And what a place it was! The large room, the size of, a, of the gym at Nancy's school, was filled with cameras, lights, microphones, cables, and other equipment. In the middle of the room was a fake living room, complete with furniture, a TV set, and walls covered with artwork and photographs. A man and a woman were sitting on the couch, while another woman with a clipboard stood over them, talking. Other people rushed around, shouting orders and looking very busy. The woman with the clipboard glanced up when she heard Nancy and her group enter. She was a tall and slender, she was tall and slender, with reddish brown hair and glasses. She waved and she waved and came over. Hello, welcome, she called out. You must be the Drews. I'm Yasmin, Brett Banner's assistant. Mr. Drew introduced himself, Nancy, Hannah, George, and Bess. It's very kind of Brett to let us visit the set, he said. Oh, it's no problem, Yasmin said pleasantly. He's in his office on an overseas call right now. Why don't I give you a quick tour while he wraps up? Thank you. We would love that, Hannah answered. I don't know how much you know about the movie, Yasmin said. It's called The Aliens Next Door. 
It's a comedy about a family that moves in next door to the Mitchell family, owners of Fluffington. Fluffington is the only one who can tell the new family, the Graysons, and their dog, Pom Pom, are actually aliens posing as Earthlings. Fluffington? Bess gasped. As in Fluffington, the most famous cat in the whole wide world? Chapter 2. A Big Blue Mess Are you talking about the super famous Fluffington from the Crunchy's cat food commercials? Nancy asked Yasmin. Yasmin grinned. The one and only. Nancy smiled at her father. No wonder he had said Bess would have a hard time getting an autograph from the star of the movie. The star of the movie was a cat. Fluffington is so awesome in the Crunchy's commercials, George piped in. My favorite is the one where her kitty soccer team wins a tournament and they get a huge trophy full of Crunchy's. Well, you can all meet Fluffington herself as soon as she's done with her grooming session, Yasmin said. One of the groomers is combing and brushing her for the next scene. In the meantime, why don't I introduce you to some of the humans on our set? Sounds great, Mr. Drew said. Nancy noticed a big yellow cat dashing behind a potted plant. That's not Fluffington, is it? She said, confused. I thought Fluffington was white. That cat is a stray who hangs out here sometimes, Yasmin explained. We call him Honey Mustard. He's kind of unusual because he has six toes on each paw. That's a lot of toes, Bess said. Yasmin proceeded to lead them around the studio. She introduced them to the actors who played Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell, followed by the actors who played the alien family, the Graysons. Pom Pom, a small silver poodle who was the doggy star of the show, was sitting on Miss, Mrs. Grayson's lap. Yasmin also introduced them to a young guy with curly black hair who was sitting in front of a fancy looking computer. This is Tucker Diaz, our CGI guy, Yasmin said. What does CGI stand for? Bess asked him. Computer generated imagery, Tucker replied. You girls see the movie Pigs in Space? That was a totally awesome movie, George said. Well, those pigs weren't really pigs. They were images created by people like me on their computers, T Tucker said. You know how your parents take home movies of you on their video cameras? Imagine if you, if you could create a dinosaur on your computer and add it to one of your parents' movies. It would look like you were hanging out with a dinosaur in your very own backyard, right? Well, that's what I do. Cool, Beth said. For this movie, I'm creating a whole bunch of computer images of Fluffington and Pom Pom, Tucker went on. For example, there's a scene where Fluffington goes flying through the air and crashes into a wall. Ouch! I'm creating a computer image of Fluffington flying and crashing so the real Fluffington doesn't have to, he added. When you see the movie, you won't be able to tell the difference between the real Fluffington and the computer-generated Fluffington. Wow, Nancy said. Tucker lowered his voice. I'm trying to convince Mr. Banner to forget about Fluffington and Pom Pom altogether and use nothing but computer images of them. Animal actors are too unpredictable. Computers are way more reliable. He patted the top of his computer as though he were petting a cat. Tucker, Yasmin said with a frown. Nancy glanced at Yasmin, then at Tucker. She wondered why Yasmin seemed unhappy about what Tucker had just said. Yasmin gestured to Mr. Drew and Hannah. Why don't we move on? Brett should be done with his call by now. Terrific, Mr. Drew said. They all said goodbye to Tucker. Yasmin led them past two actors rehearsing a scene and over to a corner office. The door was closed. Yasmin knocked. Brett, she called out. The door opened. Brett Banner was tall, tanned, and bald. He was dressed in black jeans and a pink t-shirt with a cartoon picture of a chicken on it. He wore a fancy-looking gold watch on his wrist. Yes, yes, I'll have to get back to you on that, Mr. Banner said into a tiny cell phone. Then he snapped it shut and extended his hand to Mr. Drew. Carson, it's good of you to come all the way out to California. Who are these lovely people you brought along? Introduce me. Mr. Drew shook Mr. Banner's hand. He introduced Hannah, Nancy, George, and Bess. Mr. Banner smiled at the three girls. How old are you? 20? 25? He joked. Nancy giggled. <laughs> We're eight. We're in the third grade, Bess added. Third grade? Hmm, well, Mr. Banner looked thoughtful. It just so happens that we need three third graders as extras for the movie. Do you, you know, do you know what extras are? Like when my dad gives me extra whipped cream on my ice cream, George said. 
Mr. Banner nodded. Yes, extras are like extra actors in the movie, except they don't have to act. Have you ever seen a scene in a movie where there's a big crowd in the background? Bess nodded. In Pigs in Space, there is a big crowd in a high school parking lot watching the pig spaceship land. Exactly. All those people in that crowd were extras, Mr. Banner added. If it's okay with all your parents, I could use three eight-year-old extras in The Aliens Next Door. What do you say? Yes, Nancy squealed. Please, Dad, can we? Mr. Drew laughed. Sounds like fun, George and Bess. I'll give your parents a call and see if it's okay with them. Yay, the three girls cheered. Mr. Banner opened his mouth to say something, but he was interrupted by a loud, horrible screech. Nancy spun around. What was that? She cried out as something went tearing past them. It was a cat. Nancy recognized her. It was Fluffington, except Fluffington wasn't beautiful and fluffy and white, like she was in the Crunchy commercials. She was covered with blue paint. Oh, it's blue paint on the cat. So, those are the first two chapters of Lights, Camera, Cats. And um, we're going to see why Fluffington is covered with blue paint. I hope you like it. If you are liking it, leave a like and I will read more Nancy Drew stories. Bye!